In this video, we're going to talk about one of the main features of the Scatterbox, sequential hot swap. Now the Scatterbox does not have any batteries internal. The reason it doesn't have any batteries internally is because we don't want you to have to carry that weight and complexity all the time, even when you don't need it. So the way we implemented hot swap is uh, it's unique in two ways. First, you control the power sources. Uh, and second, it's sequential. It's a switching system. So it never shares the two inputs that are used for the hot swap. So if you look on this one on the left, this is the side of the unit where the uh, XLR 4 pin is. That is your primary input. The secondary, the backup input, is an onboard battery. You can have both power sources applied at the same time, but it will only use the XLR if you have both of them on there, and it leaves the onboard battery that would be here as a pure backup, just sitting there waiting. The scatter box is able to detect a problem, uh, a disconnect, a, a dead battery, uh, connected to this XLR input, it's able to detect that and react within a few millionths of a second, switch over to the onboard battery, and everything keeps going. Now, this will be kind of displayed on the side of the unit so you know what's going on, but the most important thing to remember is that it will completely use up one power source here, then it will switch over to this one. It will never use them at the same time. So right now, we have the uh, XLR in input that is powering up the scatter box. You can see on the right side it says source external. And the most important thing that we can kind of take a look at here are these LEDs. You see where it says battery okay, there's nothing lit. That means that there's no battery on there or the battery's got some sort of problem, it's invalid. And this LED that's not lit, it says swap ready. That is an LED that's going to light up when, this, when the uh, software in the scatter box determines that it seems like a good idea to do a hot swap. So let's add an external battery. You see that the battery OK LED turns on, the swap ready LED turns on, but the source is still external and the, the external source will always be the priority input uh, chosen by the scatter box, assuming it's capable of holding the load. In this case, uh, you see we don't have a load on there yet, so let's add a load. There you go, we can see that there's a, the load on the load graph. And we'll switch over here to, let's see, we've got 91 watts coming out of the scatter box. This is all good. Uh, so right now the external battery, not the external battery, the onboard battery is not being used at all. It's in a, a cold standby, uh, not being drained at all. The entire amount of power going through the scatter box is coming from the external source. And the scatter box does not have the ability to source from both of them at the same time. And this is good because you want your onboard battery to remain hot while uh, you're counting on it to be a backup. You don't want it to be drained uh, for any reason. So now let's say that uh, you believe that your, your block battery is dying and you go over there and switch it. So we're going to disconnect that XLR cable. You see that the scatter box immediately switched over to the uh, the battery, the onboard battery is a source. The XLR and the swap ready LEDs turn off. You can see that uh, very plainly. And uh, everything keeps going. All your accessories are still on. The camera's still on. Everybody's still happy. And now you've got a new block battery. You repatched your AC adapter, whatever's coming through the XLR. And we'll plug that back in. And it switches right back over to the external source. And after a little bit of validation and the swap ready LED turns on and nobody ever knows uh, the difference. And that's how hot swap works on the scatter box.